What is up boys and girls? I am back in Ireland and back in the Drift Game studio. Big video today because there's a lot of things we haven't been telling you guys on the channel that now we're gonna have to come clean with. Let's get into it. So this is actually my first time back in HQ in a number of weeks. We went to, I went to LA, then I went to Australia, New Zealand, and we went to SEMA, and now we're back. And sometimes when you come back in here, guys, it just feels like an absolute dream. I think because I'm not here a lot, every time I come back, it just, every time I open that door, it kind of strikes me that it doesn't feel like real life, like these are our cars and this is kind of how far we've come because this year has been so busy doing like 15 different countries. We've performed in front of over 200,000 people with different events all over the world. But to come back home, to see everybody again, to see like my beautiful S15 in the flesh again, uh, makes all the long nights, the late days, the travel, all worth it. And as you know, by the title of this video, we are also, well, I am heading to Japan. Big news about that, but I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit of a later part of this video. But for the meantime, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about HQ and what's been going on with it. So you guys will know it's been kind of in this, say phase one, I would say, for quite some time, but we are gonna be making some changes. And some of those changes include our carcade. So we made a little bit of a change in some of our plans of what we're gonna do with this room. So. Because we are changing a lot in January, a lot of new big things coming, including a big rebrand for Drift Games, we're gonna be doing a lot more merchandising, a lot more streetwear, a lot more attention towards the items of clothing that we sell. We're very passionate about it. We've been working with some amazing designers to do something special. We're running out of space here because we have very little storage in our office. So we're thinking what we might do is take this room, which was originally the Carcade, make it into a storage facility, which we can put all of our stuff in and build where the Supra is now, a arcade, or essentially put the carcade over here, because this is kind of a weird space. As you guys can see, you can put a car here, but you can't really drive it out. So we're thinking about building something here, adding to our aesthetic of this whole space of it looking like a street, maybe making a photo box in this particular section here, switching up one of our merchandising storerooms now into another office and making our garage that's actually a fake garage down here, the Mobile One Racing Garage, into an actual garage because it's really close to the ramp. And also, we have had an issue with fumes because obviously if you start a car in here, we have ventilation, but it's not great to have a car running in here. So at least if we were there, that's the easiest access to outside. So a couple of changes coming up while I'm away. Craig and Josh will be getting to those and actually transforming the place. So you'll see all those videos coming up pretty soon. But uh, for now, Remind you guys what the place looks like. What's up, idiots? Not too good. Oh, you're back. You're back. You better be talking to us. Huh? Is it Black Hoodie Day again? Uh, Yay! Yeah. What are you working on, Blaine? Can't see. Can we? I don't know. Can we? Look at this. <laughs> chili. <laughs> chili? In the slow cooker. Got me some. Oh, you got the jacket. Uh, it's chili. Oh. Uh, sorry, you missed one thing. Why, look at he's his neck. He's a little bit chili because he's got his neck warm. Oh. He has his neck It's warm. the best invention ever. You put this in the microwave, right? And you warm it up. So the lads went soft when I was away. That's what happened. <laughs> Adam, what are you working on? Invitational? Invitational. Telling people now. Telling people about the Invitational. It is happening in December 2nd and 3rd. It's replacing the Drift Games bash, if you're not worried. It's not going away, the bash is just changing. Have a look at your stupid outfit. <laughs> so I filmed this on a green screen, Blaine. How did it turn out? It was dancing away. Well, that looks very embarrassing. Eek. Josh, other than having prawn cocktail potatoes, what are you doing? I'm looking at car parts for the MX-5 because we're doing that up in the next few weeks. Which uh, MX-5, Josh? Because you have many. It's the heavy I'm, I'm not as bad anymore. I'm down to two. Three technically, but two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that out. I'm down to two, but three technically. So he's three MX-5s, not the SOR powered one, not the NC. I presume he's talking about the NA, the one that we've forgotten. The, NA, the, the, um, the original. The one that's the one had a lot of abuse, all. but not a lot of love. So it's finally getting a bit of love. Okay, so we've got a video that's coming up on changing to phase two of the Drift Games HQ, or studios. 
We've got Josh's NA MX-5 getting transformed after many years of abuse. It's a bit of a twist to it as well. It's a bit of a twist? A bit of a twist. The chassis? bought more. <laughs> twist in the chassis? Is it a, is, are we doing a... Twist in, twist in the plan. Twist in the plan. Which is a, better than a twist in the chassis. Yeah, you don't want to bring the jig out for that. Wait, hope. There's Keen. Keen, what are you doing? Bits? Uh, not a whole pile. Not a whole as pile. usual, yeah. As usual, just tipping away. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, Music videos, that's my big thing now. He's a <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we've got some requests that people want to come film music videos here. Uh, not our complete taste of music, I would say, but. Hey. I thought it was deadly, it's deadly. It is deadly. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a chance on it. We're gonna have a bit of fun with that. Also, I forgot to show this, look at this. How cool is this? This is a signed RWB skateboard that we brought back from Australia signed by Nakai San on the actual car that was made in that video. If you didn't see that video, you can go back and watch it, but that's quite cool. And then we got a bunch of memorabilia. Look at this, we got like Fast and the Furious stuff. Got all our stuff from Australia all back up. This is kind of, these shelves are getting a little bit overwhelmed right now. But that's good, it's good. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not too sure where the poop is gonna go there. I think aesthetically, even though it's terrible as a desk, this whole area looks great. It's got like all the that's, memorabilia. That's a desk where you can't work. Doesn't matter, it looks cool. <laughs> it's all that matters. So we've got a couple of things to talk about. Let the boys get back to work. Um, this video obviously was titled about going to Japan. And that's what I'm going to talk about because this is a dream trip. It's been in the works for a long time, but there's a lot of cool stuff to expect. So I'm going to sit down and tell you all about it. All right, let's talk about this trip to Japan. Now, you guys have been wanting on the channel for us to go to Japan for about three or four years, and we always wanted to go to Japan, but we needed things to align in the right way, and we also needed a mission, a purpose to go. So three things happened all at the one time that made a trip to Japan the best choice at this time. Number one is I was looking at a car in Japan to import into Ireland to use as a drift car for our upcoming Drift Games Invitational event, something very cool. So I negotiated the price on the car and I was very, very close to closing the deal. And I was thinking about well, what would we make more interesting story about this? But obviously the interesting story would be to go to Japan, actually collect the car, drive the car in Japan, do some drifting and then export the car. So that's exactly what we're doing. And we'll be showing you guys that car once I land in Japan in the next couple of days. The second thing was, our boy Lucas, Bandana Boy, who you'll know from the videos, has been working with us all this year, has actually gone back to Japan. He was covering the whole D1GP series this year, and he's back in Japan right now, and also said that I should come and check out D1GP to see how it stacks up, in my mind, versus Formula Drift, or an LZ World Tour, or a Drift Masters, or any other event around the world. So super interested in that. He also has tons of great connections with D1 drivers and tuning shops all over Japan that he's been building up over the last year or two. So. Why not go and check him out? When we have someone on the ground, it's so much easier in Japan to go there and actually get some great content and great connections. And the third reason was because Adam LZ and all his crew and all the content creators from America are going to the Winter Matsuri in Ibisu. So I wanted to buy a car. Lucas is already on the ground in Japan and all our boys from the LZ World Tour are gonna to be there competing and driving for fun at the Matsuri in Ibisu. Those three things came together and I said, let's make it happen. So we bought the car, Lucas has a plan made out for me for two weeks and we're booked in to drive at the Winter Matsuri in Ibisu, which I've never been to before. So a whole new experience, new car, new tracks. This is like the dream trip for me. And after a ton of, I'd say running other events all year, working behind the scenes, this is pretty much me going to Japan selfishly to just have a great time, drive a car, hang out with my friends, see some cool stuff and see those tuning shops that I've always wanted to see my whole life for maybe 20 years, idolizing all of these different companies. Another bonus reason is that we have a brand new partnership for 2024 with a Japanese company. Um, but I'm gonna reveal all that when we get on the trip. There's also a lot of other stuff happening behind the scenes, which might explain why the channel has been a little bit on the road and not as many, let's say, podcasts or members videos as usual. So I'm gonna take a walk, not annoy the boys anymore, and explain that to you too. So even though this video isn't the most exciting in the world, it was definitely needed to update you guys on everything that's been going on at Drift Games. So while it looks like we've been traipsing around the world doing events and different things, which we have, there was a purpose for us to be in Australia outside of the LZ World Tour, to go to New Zealand, to go to SEMA. This was all to work on 2024. We had a very big 2023. You guys will remember that we built this whole place. We did stadium events. We started the LZ World Tour. We went everywhere. 
It's been a hugely successful year and thank you to everybody who's supported us with kind words this year. Um, it wouldn't have been possible without everybody who's involved, from my team to my extended team on the LZMFG side and Driftmaster side, to everybody we worked with, to all of our sponsors and partners, and especially you guys watching the videos. Without you and putting some views on these videos, we wouldn't be able to dream big. And that's what we're doing in 2024. We are dreaming bigger than we've ever dreamt before. We're trying to do things that no one has ever done before and we have some exciting car projects that are starting in January that are going to blow your mind. We've picked up a chassis that basically you won't believe that we actually got one and we're going to build it into a drift car. That's going to be for a tour next year across Europe and maybe further afield. There's also a lot of other stuff happening with that, but I can't get into too much of it right now. And the reason I can't tell too much is because there's a ton of people involved between sponsors, partners, events, that until all of the Contracts are signed, I don't want to give anything away. But what I can say is that the reason we haven't been super pushing content constantly over the last couple of weeks from behind the scenes is because we've been working really hard on 24. So stay tuned. By the time we get to Christmas, all will be revealed. You guys will know everything that's happening. This year has also been strange because I haven't, usually people always give me a ton of grief over buying and selling cars. I'm pretty sure this year, I bought some cars and I only sold one car, I think, this year. I only sold the S14. So we still have the LZ86 here. It's now fixed. The steering rack was fixed. The steering rack broke at Jaff Fest, but that is now ready to go for the Drift Games uh, Invitational in December. We're going to be bringing it to people for passenger spins. I'm also going to drive it myself. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting back out and tracking that car. And of course, if you haven't signed up as a driver for the Invitational, do so. Um, on the Drift Games website, you'll see all the rules and regulations. And if you're a spectator, it's going to be a wild event, last big drift event of the year. So um, hope you guys come down and show up. We're going to have some surprise guests and cars there. Datsun, we haven't done much with this this year, but it is working perfectly. Uh, Craig managed to put this beautiful little lip kit in aluminium along the bottom of the OR32. And that car is just awaiting a registration. So this was originally a Northern Ireland car and we're registering it in the South of Ireland. And it's just for some reason taking so long on all this stuff these days. So that car is now fixed. The misfire we had it, the smokiness, turned out to be a coil pack. We actually converted the car to OR8 coil pack. So now that works perfectly. She's good to go. Josh's ORX7, we talked about he might do a switch up of a kit over the winter, but uh, he just wants to kind of lower it, make it drive nice. Spirit Ray car, still looking good. This car also waiting for a registration. You guys will have noticed that this car has been on an English registration for a long time, but we haven't really been driving it because we're going to plan on driving it a lot more in the future. We've now decided to put it onto an Irish registration. Keen's 320 diesel. Why is it here? Because Keen got a new car and uh, I might go outside and show you what that is in a second, but it's a very, very cool car. One of his dream cars. I don't want to give it away, but Keen doesn't do too much on camera. And then RS15. How is RS15 going? Well, it's perfect except for it's a brand new build so it's got some little things that need to be sorted so this car group d did a yaris alternator on it and the problem with the yaris alternator now is it's not really charging the battery correctly so it's a small issue it runs out of battery it needs a jump start we also have needed really need an oil cooler uh, darren said that the temperature should be okay but it's rising a little bit more than we'd like so we're going to put an oil cooler on there so the car is going to go back to group d so by the time i'm back from japan she will be a1 finished and ready for next year. So all of the projects that we started in 2023 are almost finished. But before I finish this video, I want to show you one project we haven't shown you outside and Keen's brand new car. So as you guys know, our Drift Game Studio, which is up there, is above D Motors, which is below us. And they do pretty much all of the craziest stuff for sale in the country. So everything from like, old Jaguars to Corvettes to older Corvettes to 911 turbos look at this you even have a Ferrari Testarossa just chilling outside which is my favorite part about being above Dean Motors that every day you never know what cars you're going to see in the car park and the car park is always full of a bunch of cool stuff but Keen decided to buy himself a very cool car so we were in Australia deal came up that he couldn't refuse and he is now the owner of this beautiful 2008 M3. So this is a beautiful car. Absolutely perfect condition. It's got the kind of red leather interior and you'll notice, you can see, it is a manual. So 
So he has a manual E92 M3, which has the V8. This also has the Eventuri intake, which makes it sound incredible. I think it's got some exhaust upgrades, a little carbon spoiler, and yeah, just a really pretty car. So it's going to be a project for him over the winter. He's going to do some stuff with this. You're going to see the M3 more on the channel as time goes on. Um, yeah, excited to see what he does. Keen hasn't had a project car in forever, so that's really cool. So from one V8 to another V8, that is my exciting project, which is getting closer to being completed, is my 1970 C10 outlaw style Chevy pickup truck. So this thing, as you guys can see, has been getting some work from Dean Motors. Inside, absolutely beautiful interior, everything works great, but there were some issues. Issues were, there was a small list, just a small list. The brakes didn't work, the steering didn't work, the gear selector wasn't great, the lights didn't work, it didn't start very well, the carb wasn't working properly, the engine had a lot of gunk in it. So it's been a couple of months of work on this thing. Um, let me see if I can. So now she looks the business. So we've got a dress up kit here. Shout out to one of our friends, Steven, who sent this down to me for all these chrome parts he didn't need. We've got a new carb. We've got a new intake. We've got brand new manifolds, or if you're from the US, we'll call them headers. And she is now running absolutely sweet. We just have one last thing to do, which is connect the manifolds to the exhaust, and then it is actually ready to go on the road. And before we finish this video, I'm gonna let you guys hear it because it is outrageously loud. Just look how ridiculous this key is. It's like, look at that. That is the key to this car. Not that impressive. But what is impressive is how it sounds. So you guys know, I've always wanted a pickup truck. I've always wanted an American pickup truck. And this one is so cool. Um, but I wanted to make it sound pretty obnoxious. And now I think it might be, maybe it's the most obnoxious car I own. You be the judge. So a little bit of gas. Very loud. So. Sorry, but when it idles out, it's very loud on startup. You can start to hear the chop when it sort of gets up the temperature. You hearing this? This thing is wild. Yeah, very, very loud. Um, probably too loud. And apologies. Uh, set the alarm off on the car behind me, so. Yeah, so it's gonna be loud, it's gonna be obnoxious. We're thinking even of supercharging this next year and making it even more ridiculous. It's a super cool old truck and I'm a big fan of it. So I'm gonna give the keys back to the boys, let them get their work done. So this video is not a super complex one, travel one, loads of movement, loads of fancy editing from Josh and Lucas and the boys. This is just an update to let you know, next video you're gonna see, I'm gonna be in Japan on a big adventure. I'm so excited, like I cannot wait to get there. And just, yeah, it's gonna be such an adventure. You guys are gonna be along for the ride. And then we've got the Drift Games Invitational. Entries are open for spectators and drivers. That's December 2nd and 3rd. We also have Christmas mystery boxes coming very soon as well. It's all go here at Drift. I'll tell you what the other thing. It's all go Drift Games, Drift Masters, LZ World Tours. All the planning is going on for 24. So we're trying to keep on top of the videos while we spend a lot of time in meetings and planning. But yeah, thank you guys for holding on. Next video, we're in Japan. Who the hell knows what's gonna happen, but we'll see you there.